is going to be revealed. Because all of it's going to go through this fire. And if it's wood, hay, and stubble, guess what? Boom. It's going to burn up. But if it's gold, silver, and precious stone, we're in, those are pictures, of course, of, of the, the pure works that have been motivated by what? Because I want to please Him. They've been motivated by love and not by appearances. They've been motivated by this is something I'm doing out of my love for Christ and not because I want people's attention and look at me. Because you can do the exact same thing. People, two people can do the exact same ministry, the exact same activity, and one's motive can be pure and the other one can be for attention and one's going to be hay and one's going to be gold. Out your amen. Hello? Are you listening? I'm talking about our motivation here. I know I'm, uh, again, these are deep subjects and they can take a whole series of messages to go through all the truth. But I'm, what motivates us? Paul says, well, I'm telling you, here's my aim. I want to please him, number one. Number two, I always remind myself that I'm going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's a motivation, folks. <laughs> right? That's a motivation to do what he's called us to do and be what he's called us to be. Because I want to please him, knowing that I'm, getting, I'm going to give an account. I'm going to give an account. Funny story. I know time is moving on. It's really funny. It's worth it. <laughs> this woman in a small church was, uh, she was the flower lady. She'd been in this church probably 40 years, and uh, it was her ministry to make sure that the uh, platform had its proper floral arrangements every Sunday to make the platform. And, and she worked very hard on this centerpiece floral arrangement. And, you know, uh, people that are in the flower, they, not the real flowers, because of course they, this, this was, a, this was a, an artificial floral arrangement. And, and 25 years ago, it was beautiful. But now, 25 years later, it's still the same floral arrangement sitting at the front of the, you know, on the table in front of the pulpit. And, and I mean, and she would just meticulously make sure it was cleaned and kept right. And, and everyone knew without uh, ever being told that you don't touch that flower arrangement because that was donated and that was put there. That was made by sister so-and-so. And, and she takes care of all the flowers and, and this is her ministry and that's her little thing. And, and everyone knew that this was hers. Well, one day, a young lady got saved. And uh, as most of you would know, uh, people that come into church, they get saved. They're excited. I mean, they just had a fresh revelation of God's grace and His forgiveness. And, you know, they normally sit in the front row, and it's not until they get indoctrinated that they get to know. They get to know. I'll stop there. Um, they're excited and their their hands are raised and they're singing the loudest and they're close to the edge. They just want to take it all in. They're excited and they haven't got caught up with all of the politics of the church and they don't know who's who and why they're doing this and what they've done in the history and all that. And they're just fresh and they're real. And, and this young lady actually was, she had, she had a flower shop and she was quite gifted with flowers. <laughs> so one day... She decided, because of her, she was just excited, she loved what God was doing in her and through the church, that she, was, she had noticed this, this thing at the front of the church, when, and, and she decided that without uh, announcing to anyone, just out of pure motive, that she wanted to do something to bless the church, that she was going to change the floral arrangement. So one Sunday morning, she brought in something she had worked on all week, new and modern and fresh and bright and just to help the decor you know in the 21st century and so she took off this floral arrangement and put this other one on and she was carrying out this old dusty thing and and uh up comes marching sister so-and-so sister flowers <laughs> what do you think you're doing and they had this they had this intense time of fellowship uh, in the sanctuary, uh, 
before the 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 service and the uh, <laughs> the pastor was uh, uh, he had an office off the side of the the platform and he heard some ruckus going on and and so he just poked his head open the door and and immediately saw these two ladies in this uh, uh, predicament he closed the door <laughs> sat down at his desk and said, oh no what's going to happen uh, a few minutes later the knock came to the door and uh, so he uh, sheepishly opened it and it was the young lady who had uh, out of pure motive wanted just to do something for the church and she was almost in tears uh, and uh, she said pastor and she began to explain that there was this conflict and and that she was accosted by this elderly woman who had you know and and and, and she said i don't I, I don't know, the, the spirit of slap came upon me. <laughs> and she put this lady in her place. <laughs> well, the pastor had to go and deal now with uh, the old sister saint, Mrs. Flowers, and, and uh, try to iron out the situation that developed. Why was it such a big deal for Sister Flowers? Somewhere along the line, the motivation had changed. And it was about her. And not about doing something to, out of love for God, to please Him. And the young, fresh-faced Christian, she was just all about doing something out of her love for Jesus. And it caused some problems. May our motive ever be Understanding that we're going to give account for what we do and how we do it when we stand before that judgment seat of Christ. And the judge of all the earth who sees all and knows all will give his absolute perfect judgment. And if what we do and how we do it goes through the fire, then we will have these rewards. Again, we're not talking about making it in. We're already there at this point. But then we're talking about we're going to have these rewards, these crowns. And the Bible talks about and describes the scene how we're going to be able to cast our crowns down before our Lord and Savior in worship. Won't it be great to have something to cast down in worship and homage to Him? We serve the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, is it your aim to be well pleasing to Him? And do you understand that all, although He's our, our our Savior, our Redeemer, the lover of our souls, He's also going to be the one that we stand before as our righteous Judge. That motivates me. Finally, the greatest motivation I believe that every one of us need to have and need to experience as Paul continues to write in this passage. He talked about pleasing him. He talked about standing before the judgment seat of Christ. And, and he moves to what I believe the greatest motive is. And that's the motive of love. When he says this, For the love of Christ, verse 14, compels us. For the love of Christ, I think old King James says, constrains us. That word really means to grab a hold of. It means to grip to the point where we're going to begin to compress. And Paul says this, when in, in the context of, of living out the reality of Jesus Christ to people who are lost and dying. Again, Mary, you made reference to it, the city would be changed. If we took seriously that bridge that we wanted to sing over and over again, we're going to bring it up on the screen in just a few minutes. Paul said the love of Christ. It was a love that he knew 
personally because he had received it. It's a love that was demonstrated, of course, and, and, and Paul writes.